Today we're comparing the Popsmith and Worley Pop popcorn poppers. In full transparency, Popsmith saw the review I did of their popper, including the comment of someone asking for a comparison of the two poppers, and they asked me if I'd be interested in doing that review. I told them yes, and a couple of days later, Popsmith sent me a brand new Worley Pop from Amazon. Popsmith didn't tell me anything to say for the review, and at first appearance, it's understandable why they aren't worried about a comparison. That being said, both of these poppers make popcorn, and each has a place in the market. So let's get to it. First, let's talk packaging. Obviously, this isn't that important to 99% of people. The Whirly Pop is just another boring brown box with a logo on top, and little packaging or protection inside the box. The Popsmith, however, is packaged beautifully. It's packaged like an Apple product, where a lot of thought and effort went into all aspects of the product and marketing. It might not matter to most, but Popsmith easily wins in this category. When opening the box, the Popsmith looks and feels very nice. It has a beautiful modern slash retro design. The finish on both inside and out looks very sharp with Popsmith logos engraved on top and bottom for an extra nice touch. With several colors to choose from, you could leave this out on your counter like a KitchenAid mixer if you wanted. When picking it up, you first notice just how heavy and well put together the pan is. Heavy not in a bad way, but in a way that says quality and long lasting. The Popsmith weighs in at 4 pounds 12 ounces. My first impression is that as long as the turning mechanism holds up, this pan might be something that could be passed down if taken good care of. Similar to how my parents gave us their old Salad Master pans from the 70s. Now I don't want to give the impression that the Popsmith is Salad Master quality, but it's pretty high up there. The Whirly Pop, on the other hand, doesn't give the same good first impression that the Popsmith does. The first thing you notice is just how light the pan is, which might not be a bad thing to everyone, and I'll explain more in a bit. The pan weighs in at 1 pound 6 ounces. It's hard to describe texture on a video, but the aluminum pan is extremely light and has a bit of a matte-like or grit-like feeling. It feels cheap, but it is cheap, so I don't think expectations would be as high for the Whirly Pop. The second thing you'll notice is the lid and all the mechanics of the popper. At first glance, a lot is going on here. The lid feels very thin and has clips that hold it onto the aluminum pan. The Whirly Pop has the logo and a little popcorn pattern stamped onto the thin flaps of the lid for a nice touch. You can see the thin metal rods that make the turning mechanism and the plastic gears that spin the thin wire turner. Honestly, my first initial reaction was wondering how this thing would hold up past a few pops. But after using it a couple of times, my initial opinion has changed, slightly. To get a fair comparison, we used the Popsmith branded popcorn packets on both poppers, just to see if there would be any differences. The first use of the Popsmith was pretty simple, and in the short amount of time we've had the popper, we've popped about 10 packs now for ourselves and friends and family, so we've pretty much got it down now. Put the Popsmith on the stove, turn on your burner and let it warm up for a couple minutes, Pour in the coconut oil and let it melt and heat up for a minute. Then pour in your popcorn kernels and the salt. Throw the lid on and spin until the popping slows to almost no more popping. It's very simple and the only mistake we made the first time we used the Popsmith was having the vent hole point at us. A lot of steam comes out from this hole so you need to have it venting away from you. For a more in-depth review of popping with the Popsmith, see our original review linked below. The Worthy Pop had its pros and cons with the first popping. The instructions say you need to season the pan. It's a simple process, but it's annoying. First, we remove the lid, which in my opinion, the lid is the biggest downside of the Whirly Pop. It has these little clips to hold the lid onto the pan, and then there's another clip to hold down one of the lid flaps. It was a little bit of a struggle to remove the lid as the clips keep it on pretty tight. We got the lid off and then heated up a little bit of vegetable oil and run it around the pan while it's hot. They say you only have to do that the first time, which doesn't make sense to me because once you clean the pan, that should remove all of that oil. But either way, we did it for the first batch, then clean, and we didn't re-season it after. That's not a process I'm willing to do each time, but I don't think it's needed. When we made the second batch of popcorn, it came out just as good as the first batch. Once the seasoning process was complete, we followed the Worthy Pop directions and put the lid back on the aluminum pan. Not only was it a little difficult to take off, but it's also difficult to line the lid back up perfectly in the center when clipping it on. I think this is something that will get easier as you go, but the first couple of times it took longer than it should. Once the lid was on, Worthy Pop tells you to go ahead and pour all the contents of the popcorn pack into the pan, then place it on the stove at medium heat. 
This might be one of the few areas where the Whirly Pop excels as it takes almost no time for the aluminum pan to heat up. So there isn't any need to heat up your oil for a few minutes before adding the other ingredients. Because the Popsmith uses a thicker stainless steel, it takes a couple of extra minutes to heat up the pan initially. Once all the ingredients are inside the Whirly Pop, we start turning. I was a little concerned how the turner was going to keep the popcorn spinning because it's in there pretty flimsy and can pivot up and down, but it seemed to work okay. The Whirly Pop works just like the Popsmith. Keep the popcorn turning until it's popped. But the Whirly Pop had two big flaws for us on the first pop. It's so lightweight that you have to use both hands when turning in order to keep it over the stove. Especially once the corns start popping and you have to put in more effort to turn the crank. If you don't have one hand to hold it down while the other is turning, it's going to come off the heat and also scratch the bottom of the pan. This brings us to the second problem. Little vents are in the Whirly Pop lid right by the turning handle. A little piece of hot oil splashed out and burned my wife's hand the first time we were using it. In my opinion, it's just a bad flaw of the pen that I would think would be easy for them to fix by moving those small openings. I didn't get burned when doing the second batch the next day, but I could definitely feel the heat of the steam coming out of those little holes and could see where that might happen again. With the Popsmith, it's easy to keep the steam and oil away from you by turning the lid around so the bent hole points the other direction. To my knowledge, there's no way to fix the issue with the Whirly Pop. The corn continues to pop and the hand crank gets a little harder to turn as more popcorn fills up in the pan. Whirly Pop tells you not to force the crank, so we had to stop turning the mechanism before it was done popping. If you force it very much at all, you're going to bend the rods or grind the gears off of the Whirly Pop. Once popping noticeably slowed to almost nothing, we removed the Whirly Pop from the heat and poured the popcorn into the bowl. The final product of each popper differs little. Both made excellent tasting popcorn. The Whirly Pop is just a little more cumbersome to use. Next, we moved to cleaning both pans. We have always hand cleaned the Popsmith ever since we got it, but we thought we would try throwing it in the dishwasher this time. The nice thing about the Popsmith is that all three pieces are dishwasher safe. We pulled it out the next morning and the dishwasher did a pretty good job. The Whirly Pop, on the other hand, has explicit instructions not to use a dishwasher for cleaning. So the Popsmith, by default, automatically gets the win for being dishwasher safe. But everyone might not find that as useful. We hand wash all of our big pans because they take up so much space in the dishwasher. If you're one of those run it every night people, then you'll probably have room. If you let your dishwasher fill up for two or three days before running it, then like us, you're probably not putting big pans in it. The Whirly Pop isn't necessarily any more difficult to clean with soap and a brush than anything else, but I think over time it will be more difficult to keep it clean. There are so many little nooks and crannies and areas that are harder and possible to get to, like the flaps of the lid. I can easily see grease building up in these areas over time. The small thin wires are also a little bit of a challenge to scrub with a brush since they don't have much surface area. Another small issue we noticed here is the bottom of the Whirly Pop is already pretty scratched up after the first use. We made a second batch the next night, this time doing it the way we've started to make the popcorn, using less of the kernels. These packs are big enough for a small family, and since it's just the two of us, we take a little bit of the kernels out so we get a more buttery slash salty mixture. We popped exactly 100 grams of corn in both poppers. The Popsmith has been consistently easy to use, as long as we remember to keep the vent pointed away. The second batch in the Whirly Pop was pretty much just like the first. A little easier to use the second time around now that we know what we're doing, and easier to spin with the pan not getting as full as it did the first time. The Whirly Pop, beyond getting the lid aligned and snapped on, is pretty easy. I do like putting in all the ingredients before turning on the stove to avoid any hot oil splashing or early popping while the lid isn't on. I suppose you could do that with the Popsmith too, but I haven't tried it. Cooking with fewer kernels resulted in both poppers giving us more yellow, buttery, and salty popcorn. The Whirly Pop had a few dark pieces. They weren't quite burnt yet, but they could have been if left on a few more seconds. I'm attributing this to the turner not being able to spin once a decent amount of corn gets popped in the Whirly Pop. The wire turners and the turning mechanism aren't strong enough to keep turning, and again, Whirly Pop tells you not to force it. Next, we hand clean both pans this time. The Popsmith is very easy to hand clean and cleans everything extremely well. It's not like the Whirly Pop is difficult to clean by any means, but you do have to mess with the lid flapping around and the thin wire mechanism and exposed gears. It would be interesting to see how clean all these little areas will be after 10 to 15 poppings. I'm giving a slight edge to Popsmith for easier hand cleaning. So let's talk about a few other things with each popper, starting with the Popsmith. We've had the Popsmith for a few weeks now, and we have not babied the pan at all. 
We've taken it on a few trips to the lake where it rattled around with the luggage in the back seat of the truck. We've thrown other pots and pans on top of the pop smith to air dry when cleaning up in the kitchen. We've used it more than a dozen times now. It's got a few tiny nicks in the paint. Nothing major or anything you would see without actually examining the pan, but they are there. The pan still looks great and everyone who's seen the pop smith thinks it's a neat idea and product. Personally, I'd like to see them come out with one more variant an all stainless version that matches our salad master pans. I think that could look really nice and you wouldn't have to worry about any paint scratching. And as I said in the original Popsmith review, I think they need to include at least one package of their popcorn when buying a popper. Popsmith offers a one year warranty on their product. Moving over to the Whirly Pop, one of the most interesting things about the Whirly Pop is all the nevers in the instruction booklet. Never place in a dishwasher. Never put an empty pan on the stove because the aluminum can melt. Never shake the popper because it can cause scratches, which is true. Never force the crank. There are so many rules it reminded me of Gremlins. I'm surprised it didn't say not to pop the corn after midnight. The Whirly Pop has a 25 year warranty on all the mechanical parts, but only a 90 day warranty on the aluminum pan and the wooden parts. One other thing to note about the Whirly Pop, we're actually comparing the cheapest pan they make, but they have other models as well. From a simple upgrade of having metal instead of nylon gears, they also have a model with a stainless steel pan that comes in several colors, and a higher end platinum series popper for $100. There are several different packages you can pick up on Amazon, and the one we were sent included a bag of the manufacturer's popcorn. So let's wrap things up and talk about who each one is for. Honestly, I'm a little biased after purchasing and using the Popsmith for a few weeks now. I'm the kind of person who would rather save up and buy the higher quality, more heavy duty pan that looks great. We've gotten lots of great comments on how the Popsmith looks and works from friends and family. That being said, we did have one friend that liked the look of the Popsmith, but has arthritis in her hands and said she would rather use the Whirly Pop since it was much lighter and easier for her to pick up. At the end of the day though, both of these poppers can make great tasting popcorn. So if you love popcorn but just don't have the budget for the Popsmith, the Whirly Pop is still a great option for you. Starting around $35, the Whirly Pop would also make a great dirty Santa gift that someone would actually use and enjoy. If you're like me and willing to pay extra for the much higher quality, then you're definitely going to want to go with the Popsmith. The Popsmith on Amazon is $200, but if you buy direct, they often have coupons which could bring down the price a little. I got mine during their 40% off birthday sale and enjoyed even more savings. I won't be shocked if they have a nice sale during Black Friday and it would make a really great Christmas gift. I hope this helps anyone looking for a comparison or recommendation. Let me know in the comments which one you decided on. Thanks for watching everybody.